This is Fox 5 Local News at 5. We tell this story for the old soldiers who pulled themselves a little straighter today to salute brothers who never made it home. We continue tonight to honor the 70th anniversary of the historic D-Day invasion that marked the beginning of the end of World War II. Of the roughly 73,000 American soldiers and sailors taking part in the invasion, some 2,500 were killed. One who survived that day lives right here in the D.C. area. Fox 5's Bob Barnard has, has Mort Kaplan's story. How are you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you, Mr. Kaplan. We met Mort Kaplan at his law office in Washington. He comes here almost every day, says he swims every morning. Now 97 years old, the longtime tax attorney says he remembers living through D-Day and the bloody weeks that followed as if it was not 70 years ago. It stays with you. I mean, you don't forget it, you know. Coming on the beach with all those bodies there, people in the water, arms and legs, it was, it was a mess. Kaplan was a 27-year-old law school graduate when he landed at Omaha Beach along the Normandy coast. When I landed on really D plus one, the beach was just completely covered with, with dead bodies. It was like a wax museum. I was a Navy beach master. I had about a half a mile of beach on Omaha Beach. He commanded 40 men, helping to direct the subsequent waves of boats and soldiers onto the beach. We've been called sort of the, the forgotten teams, you know, but we stayed on the beach for 30 days. Clearing the beach of the dead. We had to get them off the beach because with the fresh troops coming in there, be, you know, ghastly. Working closely with the Army. And they had a group called the Gravediggers Corps. And so the Gravediggers came down and we assisted them and they moved them up the hill, put in a temporary cemetery up on the hill. Kaplan says he trained for more than a year to get ready for the invasion. One of my fraternity brothers from the University of Virginia was killed on that beach. The memories as fresh as those days were long. Our biggest concern was that at night, for the first two weeks, the German planes would come in and strafe the beaches. And that was a little uh, <laughs> hairy. <laughs> After his time on the French coast, Kaplan went back to England to work as a lawyer for the Navy. I prosecuted some cases. I was very green, but I learned how to prosecute, defended. And I, I was in London on VE Day. I went down the next day to the uh, Buckingham Palace where the king spoke and Churchill spoke. Their events I'll never forget. After the war, Kaplan became a law school professor. I had both Teddy and uh, Bob Kennedy as students at UVA. And that's how he met President John F. Kennedy, who made Mort Kaplan head of the IRS. President Kennedy over there is the only president who's ever visited the IRS to this day. Mortimer M. Kaplan, the president of the United States. This is newsreel footage showing Mort Kaplan welcoming President Kennedy to IRS headquarters, May 1st, 1961. Thank you, Mr. President. You have just participated in an historic occasion. President Kennedy was a very inspirational person. And uh, he was very supportive of the IRS. It was a different scene than we have today. Kaplan went back to Omaha Beach with his wife and two of their five children 40 years ago. And just five years ago, was awarded the French Legion of Honor. Every once in a while, I receive some little token, uh, a reminder. <laughs> of appreciation. Yes, yes. Mort Kaplan has lived a pretty remarkable life. He turns 98 next month. All possible because he made it through those dark and desperate days 70 years ago. Wow, what a story. Bob what Barnard, story. I don't know how you come up with these stories, Bob. That's fantastic. He, he appears to be in fantastic shape, number one. Uh, number two, I want to ask you, he, he mentioned uh, that he landed on D-Day plus one. That's right. That was the day after D-Day. He was there on a boat planning to go in 70 years ago today, but the beach was loaded. It was There was so much equipment. Mm. People, 
mm. bodies, mm. and they decided to set anchor. They spent the night out there and went in on day two. It was ah. just such a mess there mm. that mm. with those first waves of soldiers and sailors coming in. The Charming stories, man. The stories, the stories they have. Yeah, and you know what? We all know, as, as even the people fighting in Iraq and Afghanistan, young men and women, they're all so young when they're doing right. this. Many go on to, leave, uh, to, to lead extraordinary and ordinary lives. Mm -hmm. um, but this man, he and his wife, Ruth, still living, married many, many years, have donated millions of dollars. He's been a fortunate man to the University of Virginia. Oh, There's a theater there fantastic. named after Ruth Kaplan. And, and so an extraordinary life that, yeah. that didn't end then yeah. and uh, still continues today. That Charming man. Right. Good for them. Good for them. Thanks for bringing it you, to you us. You told the story very well, too, Bob. Thank that you. Was, thank you. Easy to do. <laughs> still ahead today at 5.